We're not trying to sell us. people t-shirts. Basically. Yeah, we're, access to us. The LGC <laughs> I think that's fan where club. my are. Are they? And welcome back to Linux Gamecast Weekly. The show that covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how tos, and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. Um, Vin Stone here at LGC Axel we'll switching the bits, doing the nightmare fuel in our little Linux powered studio, joined every week by the fireplace, uh, also featuring one Jordan Svong and staying up late past his bedtime. You know him, you tolerate him. The blue microphone cable. Yes. How's it Hello. going, guys? <laughs> Kill me. <laughs> and together with you at home, watching this live chat room dynamic, helping us form Cocaine Voltron. Before we get started, we like to uh, we got we got to play a lot of catch up, maybe a little bit of mustard. And what is up in your life, organs? Jordan, you got the most going on this week, man. Yeah, I moved. Uh, Did you move long- for the sole purpose of being able to duct tape a llama bed sheet to a wolf? You know what? <laughs> Not exclusively, but it factored into my decision making okay. for sure. Right. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, there, there's a bit of, of a snafu involving the bank losing a seven hundred thousand dollar check the day of the purchase. So uh, that was that was quite stressful. Um, but yeah, we're almost fully moved in. I still have to clean up the old apartment, and I still have another month's worth of rent on there. Oh. But um, whatever. You yeah. need you need to give sixty days, so I'm like, eh, well, I'm, I'm I can just live here now. I don't have to live there. I'm yeah, here. right. I, yes. What what <laughs> one problem was the networking? Uh, I thought I could just drill straight through from the the den to the basement, but this house is Z shaped, and that was not apparently in the cards. So I got a super. <laughs> you, you just need a Z shaped cable. Of you know, I need a two hundred foot Z shaped cable. So. Easy. Yeah, <laughs> not not for Amazon. It seems. Oh man! So I, I I I tweeted. I tweeted. I'm just like I was. I missed my stream on on Friday because like I was waiting for the network cable to show up. And Amazon customer support is like, "Hey, did we fuck up? Did can we can we flangulate one of our drivers for you?" I'm like, "Nope, hasn't arrived by the scheduled time yet." I'm just I'm just twiddling my thumbs. Thanks, Corpo drones. They're like, "Let us know if it doesn't show up on time. We will castrate that driver." Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Poor driver. He's like, I miss my family. He gave you cable at 10 p.m. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, it pisses man. in a water bottle. I missed <laughs> the Friday stream uh, for a completely different reason because I got a little thing that showed up in a bag. This is what you get for $900 from Magewell. Yeah. This. Just the bag? That's it. Just the bag. You got to pay extra if you want the. Uh... The, 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 that's, that's some Prada shit right there, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, but but it's such a nice bag. It, it's poppy and stuff. Uh, this is the Pro Capture HDMI quad that I had to like double check on eBay to make sure it didn't have blood stains on it because I didn't pay retail for it. I'll be doing a video on that later. But yeah, there's a quite a bit of things to learn and get set up with. But Pedro and Jordan are both coming through it, and they're looking extra crisp. I don't know, llama tastic. <laughs> And uh, you can zoom in on our pores. Pick this guy up. <laughs> this is the Argon M2. Argon 1 M2. Yeah, very memorable name. It's what about the, the Krypton M2? No, dude. It, it, I, I got an SSD in the bottom of it, and it's on the bottom of it. That's neat. I'm not doing a video on this. Uh, this is for the Raspberry Pi 4. It's a nice aluminum case. I'm going to say the only critical flaw is there's no way to dissipate the uh, heat. That builds up in the top of the case, but it's got a very clever cooling solution that just uh, two pins that go right down on the CPU, GPU, little chiplets, and uh, for desktop usage, I'd recommend it. 45 bucks, and it's got a power switch on the back. Not sponsored, but yeah, if you're going to be compiling stuff, which, listen, you've made poor life choices, probably not the case you want to get. It's neat. I thought I'd give it a mention. (laughs) And it's got the USB thing on the back that Pedro hates, and that makes me happy. I mean, if you're going to be compiling stuff on I don't Raspi, hate it. It's just an abomination. If you if <laughs> don't don't tell them about cross compiling, I want people to uh, suffer. No, no a, well, a cross compiling doesn't <laughs> debug fully all your tool chain. B set up a fucking Beowulf cluster. Don't have a case for your pies. Have like some threads that you run through the little thingies or whatever. Daddy, would you or like a, some piesage? Yes, yes, I would. <laughs> Give me all your piesage. No, put no. it in my mouth. All the piesage belongs to the horse. The horse, yes. We're not, we're not, we're not going to ask about Pedro? No. Fuck Pedro? All right, fuck Pedro. I didn't write anything, so fair enough. Yeah. Of course it All is. Right, fuck, <laughs> fuck Pedro, it's the steam! 
Linux. <laughs> fuck, fuck you, you I mean, update. update. Oh, 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 <laughs> oh, let's get right into it. So, um, shit's on fire over at Valve uh, situation. All normal. This showed up earlier this week uh, from Secret Club. Two years ago, Secret Club member uh, Flosin reported remote code execution flaw affecting all Source Engine games. It can be triggered through a Steam invite. There's a nice little video on the uh, Twitter post showing the OMG shit's on fire, yo. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> It is yet to be patched, and Valve is preventing us from publicly disclosing it because you agreed to that in all fairness. But then again, this is also Valve. Valve time. So, oh, hang on. Let's watch it. So what's going on here exactly? Uh, they send an invite uh, and it launches Steam calculator. Invite. Yep. Yeah, yep. I mean, I mean, he, ex- he executed some remote code. That remote code was calculator. launch calculator. Oh, no. <laughs> I mean, it, it doesn't, it doesn't <laughs> well, have yeah. to be, like, super complex to prove its effectiveness. I don't know. Maybe it can only it, launch it, calculator. It just needs to launch something. Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, so, no, seriously, I, Valve. I, I, I want everyone to guess at home. Did Valve <laughs> go, oh, oopsie, we forgot about this. Or did they just sit and wait until, I don't know, critical mass built on the internet? Then my, they fixed it. They would never do this. I like, consulted the tinfoil in my uh, in my in my drawer under under the under the kitchen, and it says <laughs> that this was put. This isn't a bug. This is a feature. This was put here intentionally by Valve, probably for something ultimately benign. But it's like it'll be really easy to just push updates or do shit if we can just run arbitrarily run a command on a on a host system, right? I, no one's gonna ever <laughs> discover it and use it for anything malicious. That's impossible. I don't know. My first thought was, you know, playing that with it foil hat and like I is getting all the five G's and stuff in the house. Uh, oh, you I, got vaccinated. Cool. No, I didn't. Oh, <laughs> Conspiracy. <laughs> uh, check this out. Um, this can only like work against currently right now in this form. They were saying it, it's only an exploit with CSGO, but mm-hmm. why would they not want to close this Pedro? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I have no idea. The, the honestly, you sh- really shouldn't try to gag people who have gone out of their way to let you know that there's a serious flaw with your product, uh, and because the, uh, the the fine folks there do say it's like Valve doesn't want us talking about it. It's like, <laughs> yeah. Well, they yeah. agreed not Why? to talk. Why did you let it get to this point? I mean, Valve's bug bounty, bounty problem is so bad, too, because they really restrict the scope of what you can actually report. It has to be, like, with the website, yeah. and that's it. Like, well, you gotta also remember the Euro Truck Simulator guy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's like, hey, I report... It pff, wiped off the Valve. Like, I reported <laughs> it. Uh, they didn't do anything, so I pushed out an update that triggered the, uh, the exploit, mm-hmm. and then they banned him. Really, Valve? Smart. Really? Smart. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. So that happened, Internet. Hopefully it's fixed. I don't think it was going to affect anybody in our audience, but hey, who knows? Valve time. Yeah. The, they fixed it now. Well, they put a bit of a band-aid on it. They didn't actually fix the issue. They just, just made sure that the command is now routed through a function that sanitizes the input, it's basically. Through two calculators. I, I do, I do like though. Uh, I, I did a little reading on the on the MITRE database on the NVD. Yeah, they rate that as like uh, mid to high eight, which means that if this was running in a production system, you could not take credit card transactions if you keep oh. running. And I also yeah. want to mention right quick. I didn't mention it right at the top. Jordan's got that nice new house reverb going on this week, so mm-hmm. save us that. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, save all your anger for the latest Steam client update. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Yes, there has been a new one of those uh, for April 12. They fixed a long delay before game launch of the session for users uh, with thousands of shared screenshots. Yeah. I, too, fall asleep on the F12 key sometimes. I just, I'm <laughs> playing games and then I just fall and then I take a thousand screenshots and then my game would start up. Yeah, no, that, that's the thing. That's not just falling asleep on the F12 key. That's actively going through after you've fallen uh, asleep on the F12 key, right-clicking and sharing every single one of those to the Steam Cloud. That That's what was delaying your logins. <laughs> and uh, they've also introduced a bunch of uh, fixes and a couple of new, uh, new things for remote play, including the 40 megabit and 75 megabit custom bitrate options. If you have that kind of uh, upstream, 
you absolutely can use those now. Uh, there's a controller hot plugging in uh, Unity games has also been fixed. So if one of your remote people unplugged the controller, it should no longer crash. Ideally, more that, more that, please. <laughs> All the more that because that is something I definitely have to check. How many times um, have you been getting a stream ready? You're like, hey, we're gonna go live. Oh, this controller, that's neat. Oh, the controller timed out. Oops. Well, Oops. hang on, yep. everyone. <laughs> Let me restart this game. <laughs> <laughs> oh man yeah that, that, that's that's one of the really nice things about like having steam input as that layer is they can just kind of be like no there's always a controller here maybe that controller might be a keyboard sometimes but now it's a controller when you plug that in pretty much man and the yeah. uh interesting one is right at the end with the uh, steam networking sockets they improved peer-to-peer -peer routing to better utilize relays and data centers not connected to the valve backbone so basically if you're trying to connect to someone uh and the fastest route is not through the valve vpn as it were this is a very good thing that it, it just goes outside or, or, it's like okay it's faster that way or, or if you or if you don't have uh valve point of presence in your local data center which is this, pretty yes helpful. now another thing have either of you ever messed around i've guess i've known it was there is the options to like limit download speeds to certain amounts no because i want my steam downloads to be as fast as fucking well, possible my first thought through my other users like i thought that was built into automatically like why are you only downloading at 25 megabits <laughs> that's how fast I, da I download at you know they got a good day because uh. well, you're not on the steam <laughs> vpn you need to improve your peer-to-peer -peer routing <laughs> well um team fortress 2 bots uh th this is next level yeah, I mean, it's been it's been a bit of an arms race when it comes to bots in Team Fortress 2. Uh, Valve has actually had to do something for the past couple of years. Uh, so has the community, including some really clever bots that try to find other bots and cheat to kill them before they can kill you. But now, now it's getting a bit next level. Now uh, the bots are spamming, hey, do you not want to be targeted by us? Give us some fucking money. And yeah. Full on protection racket. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> about, about, about 500 bucks. Yeah. Um, and not only that, apparently some bots are actually like saying message us if you want to gain access to child porn, which is pretty awful. Like to me, it when, once you start bringing that into the equation, Valve has to start taking some drastic actions right? before the police car start knocking on their door and be like, yo, yeah. are you just are what you distributing hell? that shit? <laughs> are you letting your network distribute that shit? Dude, no, that's a bit of a non-starter there. Um, so I'm, I don't, I don't know when when that kind of shit is happening. You happening, you need some sort of drastic extreme action. I'm, and I, I don't know what that's ultimately going to be. Well, I think or it's if, pretty easy to sit back and go. I think the lack of mild non-extreme boredom has led to this. I mean, once you're to the part where somebody's like they 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 the crunch numbers, and this apparently has worked at some point. It's such an issue. They're like, hey, I, we we can go get rid of these bots if you give us some money. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, and that, that's... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, 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 it seems like right now, if you want a bot-free TF2 experience, you're basically stuck using private servers. The article right. brings up there's a, there's a esports league that has their own internal infrastructure that is bot free and that's getting a lot of traction mm -hmm. apparently that's also been fairly well received from the uh tf2 community so this this is kind of where we're at focus Every on me not the llamas no you stupid fucking camera <laughs> no best llama <laughs> i always come back but, to yeah. the um video from i think maybe two years ago at gdc uh what uh, the valve humans were talking about yes we're learning how to use artificial intelligence to spot it's like why don't we quit fucking around with it and do something about it? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Valve. Yeah, no, they, they introduced, uh, they tried to change the VAC system to try and detect the hidden characters in the bot's name to identify them. It's like, oh, okay, you're a bot. But that hasn't been working because the, then the bot uh, people, the, the people behind the bots decided, you know the what? robot people. Let's just. Cyborgs. Yes, let's just start copying the names of actual players. So, yeah, that kind of defeated that. And uh, it's, yeah, it's not an arms race because an arms race implies some sort of competition. Uh, and clearly the bots are winning. Yeah, it's it's kind of bad. <laughs> it's it's kind of bad, but <sighs> maybe they'll do something about it. I don't know. I mean, it's a free game, so you, you get what you pay for. You Val Valve pay doing for. something about it. That's, that's funny. You <laughs> Gosh, how dare you, you epic loyalist 
<laughs> yes. Uh, yes. All right. Maybe maybe I need to bind myself to some other cause. This was kind of neat. Yeah. So uh, Binding of Isaac, Repentance, the new DLC for Binding of Isaac is out. And, you know, people are fucking around with command line flags. And uh, turns out there's a network co-op mode that uh, has made it in there. Now, you can use it. It's not really stable. Uh, timing and sync is usually off. So likely this was either a planned feature that was still under development. It got merged into the master branch and then it got pushed out. Or this was something that they implemented, never really took out and decided, yeah, that's not worth it. Uh, but if people are going to start exposing it, this might be the impetuous that Binding of Isaac players need to, uh, or the Binding of Isaac devs need to actually implement some proper network mul multiplayer. Because right now, your options are like remote play or parsec. And that's kind of fucking it. Well, okay. My, my first thought was like, when I hear broken, because we're damaged individuals, my first thought was like, how broken? Can I fundamentally yeah. broken? <laughs> It's, it's exactly it's, it's our Char kind of broken. It's Char technically Charlie murder you broken. couldn't make it work. Because <laughs> <laughs> we, we might be streaming some of that later uh, next week. Depends <laughs> on, depending on how broken it's like, oh, no, this is playable. Nah, nah, that's boring. But yes. Mm -hmm. That, yeah, no, it, it, apparently the big issue, according to uh, all the articles I read, including the uh, Kotaku one, is like, it's delayed. It, like, the enemy is already dead and you're still shooting at it on your screen and then it just disappears. It's like, oh, okay. Yeah. So, yeah, clearly unfinished mm. from the look of it. <laughs> I don't know. I look forward to it. Uh, Commandos 2, a game I've never heard of, has an HD remaster and it's now available for Mac and Linux. The Commando series is a very known one if you're into the whole real-time strategy thing, and I do mean real-time like, strategy. It's if you the want Desperados thing, right? Sort yeah, of? it's uh, Desperados was made off of the original uh, Commandos, mm -hmm. and uh, the yeah, this is the second one where they improved graphics, a bit of a an engine uh, overhaul back in the day, and this is the HD remaster. You now. You can play it on Linux. Yeah. But if, yeah. if you have a 980. Oh. If you have, yeah, no. Something tells me you can play this on Intel integrated graphics because. Shut up, man. I can't afford a 980. Have you seen the prices? <laughs> <laughs> because I remember my dad playing um, this game on a GeForce uh, FX 5600. <laughs> So oh. yeah, no, it's fine. <laughs> no, well, no. When when they say, when you usually when they say, oh, this is the remastered edition, it's hey, now we can run it on modern computers, so we don't have to worry about resource constraints. Let's just like make it as inefficient as possible, right? Uh. <laughs> well, if they did, then kudos to them. But yeah, no. The, judging by the videos and the uh, the screenshots, it is still very much Commandos too. High resolution, certainly, but you will still be able to play it on whatever. <laughs> I'm guessing they just didn't validate it. I, I, the, the, other, the other thing is they made a bold move. They're supporting Big Sur. So I wonder if they're actually like mm -hmm. ever planning on considering like, oh, is this just for the x86 version or are we expecting people to run this just on Rosetta? Just x86 for now. <laughs> for yeah. now but, um, for definitely going to have the developers, um, a, a section of developers that are going to be looking at the new architecture and they're going to see it more as a challenge. Also like, hey, kind of a locked in market. You're kind of desperate, yeah. unless you're doing oh, yeah. it with like Rosetta too, right? <laughs> oh, oh man, it, it's going to be Mac gaming back in like early Humble Bundle games. It's like, oh my god, and yet it moves on Linux it, natively. It's <gasps> going to be like early days of Linux Why? when I had every commercial <laughs> game released on Linux for the better part of like 13 years. Man, I'm like, yeah, I'm good. So we buried the lead. We're going to talk about it. Metro Exodus is a brand new game that's never been released, and if it's Linux, no, it wasn't. Listen, 4A Games, they made two of these. This is the third one. It's pretty dope. I like it. This came out in 2019. It was an Epic Store exclusive for you. Then it came to Steam, and it was Windows, but it's been running with Proton, like Platinum rating, like 20 seconds after that. It's all right. Mm -hmm. It's all right. We're going to talk about it more in the uh, Chairquisition this week, but hey. Thirty nine ninety nine. If you want to play the home game, sixty four ninety eight. Triple A pricing. <laughs> that goal is a triple A game, Patron. Why don't we, it's, a, mm -hmm. it's, it's a year old triple A game that they you can only get on the Epic Store for Two a while. So, uh, well, let's take a look oh, at yeah, the Steam OS right. and Linux uh, twenty twenty requirements. Sixty four bit <laughs> yeah, processor. Ubuntu twenty. You need an i five to get in the game. You need an i seven to play it. Eight gigajoules of RAM. Recommended <laughs> graphics. 
1070. Boo, 2060. Yay! Just because I have one in the box. And or <laughs> an AMD RX 5 5500 XT with 8 gigajoules mm-hmm. of VRAM. Yeah. Yeah, it's a thing. I mean, we're excited about it. I mean, I've been... Uh, go. I, I have a public Steam account. Go take a look at when my account bought this game. It was Wednesday. Like, yay. That mm-hmm. I totally didn't get up early because you're like oh you're, t- oh, you're gonna launch it <laughs> okay uh, then so i'm gonna do that i'll download it and i'll have time to stream it before we go live on wednesday for the main show <laughs> no uh-huh. you should have slept no. in buddy <laughs> <laughs> i was sitting it wasn't in here at like a minute before we started mm. the pre-show on wednesday but it, it was like 40 minutes before so yeah <laughs> it, was, it was like three hours later they get it uh somebody went hey we should probably test that instead of like started it's like oh right 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 then it downloaded the thing <laughs> more on it at 11 <laughs> and uh we will definitely get into it but we got to talk about cookie settings because game industry.biz desperately wants to know about my cookie privacy and um, you, you, gotta, you gotta use those necessary strictly necessary cookies okay what are your thoughts on this have you noticed that the um this is a little going on the side here the most recent round of like hey will you accept all cookies the blue button is the accept all one it's like oh take everything in marketing while it's like the grayed out ones like only mm-hmm. there's the ones that are absolutely necessary just the necessary ones yeah, yeah. a lot of people that, that, are going to get sued on their gdpr because of that <laughs> yeah that's well no that's that negative design pattern right like you just gotta forward people to the thing they don't want because ma- and make them think it's the thing they do want i guess but speaking of things no one wants dude uh epic's burn rate how much money have they spent to um give everyone free video games well 444 million in 2020 on making the storefront more lucrative to PC gamers, which is like, hey, come get a free thing every week, which strangely enough has become normalized. Uh, there was a uh, IGM shows that players spent 700 million on the Epic Store in 2020. That's not bad. Only 265 million of that was spent on third party games exclusive to it. So, <laughs> mm-hmm. not yeah, even but, half was mm. for the exclusives. So, <laughs> so ha- but like, ha- I, I wonder how much of that is Fortnite, though. It's hats and shit, right? Yeah, right. The, the, does that still get lumped into uh, Epic Games Store? Pro- possibly, man. So you got to look at it like this. Okay, I know I've definitely said it. You know, to compete with something like Steam, now you got to burn some cash. You just do, hundred percent. Um. You're going to need that ton of money. You're going to need backers. You're going to have to, at very least, it was just like marketing and just public awareness. But that's only going to work if you have a product that is competitive. And the Steam store, mm-hmm. as bad as it is, compared to the Epic store, is a fucking testament to the arrogance of mankind. <laughs> compared to whatever the hell the Epic is like, shopping cart. No, no, there shop- is no I, shopping you know, cart, and there I, wasn't I, even I ch- a back button until a couple of weeks ago. So. I checked. I checked yeah. today because I, I made I made the joke in the show notes, and I'm like, wait, hold on, am I just talking shit? Have they actually? No, they have not fixed this. Two years later, um, yeah, burn all the money you want. You got to make sure you have something to back it up, like Ben said, and like, yeah, I, I just just trend wise, I don't see a lot of people like rushing to buy games on the epic store people were people are more mad about the exclusive stuff than excited that they can get a game they are. most oh people i know uh, who are on windows are going yeah i have a, an epic account just so i can get a free game every week is okay that, cool yeah that, it, when i was speaking to that being normalized because what it was like oh okay well you know what i'll create an epic account and probably maybe for the first month i was just in case i'll case we're going to roll out like a Linux version which probably never absolutely never happened um i i don't bother with it anymore it's like whatever i'll just buy the game on steam because it's not like nothing against heroic games launcher i mean that's a great tool if you want to play that game but third party convenient stuff man like Mm -hmm. well wait yeah case in point metro (laughs) wait double wait with some weight on top 
Yeah. <laughs> I mean, at least at least they're on the Epic Game Store is on track to being profitable by 2027. <laughs> if, 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 it, if it lasts that long. Um, I mean, I mean, I, I, don't, yeah. I don't know. Something tells me that it will continue to exist in some like diminished capacity just because like one, one day. That, that's I, the thing. This is where I'll argue with everyone that I've seen this week on the Internet. Uh, people signaling, oh, it's the end of Epic. The amount of money they spent on this, which might be abstract. To the pores like us, mm-hmm. it's a rounding error with the cash flow. They oh, ab- absolutely. Mm-hmm. With with uh, them being propped up by Tencent, absolutely mm-hmm. not not a problem. Tencent and Sony, uh, as it turns out, because Sony invested about two hundred million something dollars into Epic. At which point, I'm starting to wonder. Wait a second, Sony, is that going to be your storefront on the PC? I don't want to give Epic money in order to play Bloodborne. Then don't. Yeah, you can just buy it used for your PlayStation Four that you have. No, yes, no. Used. Listen, Jordan. Jordan, personal responsibility is not a thing. They will force Pedro to do this. They will. They will chain him down and like force his hand to punch in his credit card number on the Epic Store. That, that cop, that cop that showed up to your door, Pedro. That wasn't a real cop. That was an in disguise Sony employee sticking your place. Oh, no, that, ready no, that, 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 that cop was very good looking. He was wearing a mask, but uh, those were some. Very nice. Take a look again. Take a look again. It was Tim Sweeney. It was Tim Sweeney all along. He knows where you live, motherfucker. (laughs) Oh, man. Yes, I think that's going to do it. It's in interesting times. Money's being thrown around. I wonder wonder if Epic can win two battles on two fronts with, you know, Apple and Valve on the other end. I don't know. Yeah, man. It's the old strategy. Divide and get fucked. Yeah, divide divide your forces, <laughs> yeah. divide your resources. That's smart. That's whatever all the good leaders do, right? Yes. All right. Well, coming up next, we got some new feature branch drivers for NVIDIA, and we also have a Terminator that runs on NVIDIA. Neat. And wouldn't you know it, uh, we do uh, have some driver news after a fairly long hiatus, when it, especially when it comes to NVIDIA. Every now and then they go for a while without putting out a driver. But before we get to that, we uh, we do need to think. What are you going to pick up NVIDIA, man? A little startup video card company. Mm-hmm. I was giving them shit. Mm-hmm. It's not fair. Why, why, aren't you, why aren't you using Matrox <laughs> card, you noobs? Right. Because you I wanna- like to play video games. No, that's that's not no. what people use computers. You gotta install <laughs> three Windows tens. If you want to help Pedro <laughs> well, afford, a, finish the install. Yeah, if you if you want to help Pedro afford a real video card for two D acceleration, you can head on over to our web zone. Maybe click on some of the links under the support buttons, like patreoncom slash Gamecast. <gasps> a place that you can go no. to subscribe to us. No. And gain access to quit, things quit, quit, like Discord. Quit trying to sell me. Uh, what are we trying to sell people? Well, not, we're not trying to sell us. people T-shirts. Basically, yeah, we're, access to us, the LGC <laughs> I think that's fan where club. My are. are they? Yeah. Mine, mine, mine are here. You can't, you can't. <laughs> okay, TIL Van Hesegi moves. <laughs> no, I man, mean, it's like it, sometimes it, it you move around. <laughs> what you, you don't have no vinyl nipples? <laughs> yeah. I, I do, but that's also because I have moobs. Um, yeah, uh, becoming a Patreon gets you some cool stuff. You get access to the Discord channel at the bottom tier. You can get that also by subscribing to our cho- yeah, Twitch channel. Can. Yeah, um, you can get access to our show notes at a higher tier. You know, tier. that's you really can... easy to set up to. I did that earlier this week. I said yeah. to a, a, like, oh, yeah, we got a Discord. And it's like, oh, neat. I've never done it from the other side. Oh, yeah, just, just click, click, click yeah, and go. Right there. Done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, get access to the show notes. Get a, uh, All tiers get access to the pre pre super shows and where you get to hear Ven dicking around with uh, Sonobus this week. And lots of echoes. You, you, you missed out on the live stream. We do it live as well if you want to show up an hour earlier of like, well, <laughs> let's go ahead and install Git on this box. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Git usage for dummies only on the LGC pre show. Oh, yeah. Indi- Highly uh, educational. Yeah. No cakes were armed. Yeah. Uh, if you give us enough money, you can even get on the show if bad you want. Bad idea. Don't do it. It's a, bad, it's a bad idea, but you can still give us money to do it. That, Speaking that, of get- That is our equivalent of the gun circle. Yes. <laughs> So we're, we're, we're just waiting on Silky Slims to show up. And, Pretty much uh, throw that glass ball at us, man. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we, also, we also got a store, speaking of giving us money, store.linuxgamecast.com. You can buy all sorts of goodies like t-shirts, uh, coffee mugs, stickers, sweaters. Coffee stickers. Coffee stickers, sweaters for your mugs, if you're one of those crazy people. 
We won't you, stop you. you. You could just get one of these. Oh, oh, they blink now. Oh, never mind. Boo. I was like, that it was just, a blank it, shirt. It, ah. it, it just turns into a black shirt. Yeah, it's it's like uh, like that invisible <laughs> kid from uh, Mystery Men. If that you is, look at it. The, it is it infinitely more horrifying now that they blink. Yeah. Oh, no. Now with t- LGC t-shirts now with weeping angel technology. They, they don't do that uh, in real life, unfortunately. Yes. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, yeah, so check that out. we got Wish Zones as well if you want to see what's running our respective studios. Oh, that's uh, something take- I need to plug. Because uh, we were looking at that earlier this week. If you go over to Linux Gamecast, which I should totally be on our own web zone right now. What? No. <laughs> because, Jordan, you were asking me, you're like, hey, man, what kind of audio rack do you have? I'm like, you know mm-hmm. what? There's an easy way to find that out. Uh, if you go to our About section and go down to Studio Equipment, everything that's in this room is itemized in here. And it's even kind of even semi-logically organized. So if you've ever had a question like that, this is where I'm going to send you anyway. So mm-hmm. yeah, Indeed. that's the thing. But we also have wish lists as well. You can buy us stuff off them. We appreciate it. You can mm-hmm. send us a note that we'll have to read. If you send Ben some stuff, you will get your name on the fla- on the flashy reflective wall of, I can actually kind of read what's Why, why don't you have like the, that, that can be your cool wall, llama blanket. You can sort of read John it's, it's, now because he's it's, down it's my, uh, <laughs> in the darker area. <laughs> no, no, yeah, you're, I, I, you're I, getting I, in like prime time right there. You better get something fucking expensive, yeah. man. Yeah. You'll yeah. actually see your name if if you get Ben something. Now. <laughs> I mean, if you have a very short name, otherwise it's going to be truncated by his head. I don't you know, know man. I, I'm, I'm <laughs> in my brain right now. I'm like. Can I do an entire show like this? <laughs> Out of spite. <laughs> I don't know. We'll, we'll ask you for a day later. <laughs> yeah, just crunch. Um, All right. Yeah, we, we, uh, speak, speaking of people we got to thank, we got to thank uh, KY Linuxcast, Kentucky Linuxcast. Kentucky for, Linuxcast. Beca- yeah, for uh, becoming a Patreon once again. So thanks a lot, man. Yeah, man. Uh, we appreciate it. Uh, well, we appreciate monster. all... We appreciate all of you providing support, whether it be equipment, money, or just spreading the good word, because yeah, we can't do word. it without you. The, the the good word, the bad word, slight, slightly the above word. okay word. I guess I don't know. I uh, I'm just saying, man. If you're gonna if you're gonna help us out and be our marketing department, you might want to like not stretch it too much. Like it's the okay <laughs> word. Set your expectations accordingly. And again, we're not a cult. Uh, what, don't stick what, around for the chairs, then. Yeah, that's what you keep stick saying. Around. But you made me sign that million year contract, so I don't know. <laughs> Never mind. Never mind. We need to talk about drivers. Non cultist yeah. drivers. Would cultists talk about drivers? Nay. I don't know. NVIDIA cultists, maybe. Well, we got we got some new uh drivers. It's 465, 2402. You got you guessed right. It's that second number, which means this is a feature branch. Um, they add some support for a couple of the A series cards. Uh looks like it's glomming together all of the advanced power management stuff. I had to install these because um Metro was not liking my box. It was getting a little crashy, so I uh did it to these drivers. Uh, they work. Yeah, that's really you know all I can what? say about them. We're definitely going to be talking about Metro a bit more later, but I installed these because I'm like, did they do something weird? Because these drivers came out this same day. I'm like, hmm, did, did we get game ready drivers on Linux? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No, we did. Nay, negative. <laughs> Nine. They can't say that they did because, you know, they're supposed to be a vendor neutral dispatch in place, but. Uh, yeah, um, uh, I would like to request the fine, fine folks who are currently managing the graphics drivers PPA for Ubuntu, you know, the official ones, to please not wait another month before these are available, because the last version, yeah. the um, 460 ones, that, uh, yeah, no, that took almost a month to show up, so please. Oh um, my god, what the, are you yeah. an arch user? Just build the damn things. I did. That that's the thing. I, I I'm specifically asking the uh, graphics drivers PPAs people to not take a whole month like last time. Why why does it matter? <laughs> why would you use the PPA to update your graphics drivers? Quit, that's crazy talk. Because it's easy. I don't know. Let's see who can install them first. That from that PPA, these drivers are just download them. Run the run. <laughs> We'll race. <laughs> yeah, no, that, 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 that yeah, the, you're already winning on that. <laughs> I tried but yeah, no, that, that PPA honking, uh, is the official one, so. That's nice. <laughs> they work on the 2060. That's all I can say. I installed them. Like, boom, on Debian 11-ish, bullseye-ish. 
whatever. So, since we're talking about hey, NVIDIA, we got to talk, talk about, about smart drivers? No. No, no, no. Okay. No. We're not going to talk about okay. drivers. Yep. Every, every generation, NVIDIA is kind enough to release that special card. No, not the one covered in fuck mothering lightsabers. You did that, NVIDIA. You did. Don't forget. Never forget. I'm talking about a version of the video card that if you have to ask how much it costs, you're not the target market. We're talking about the A4000. Sleek design. Powerful performance. Probably a fucking mint. How, how, what do you think? Four grand? Bottom end? Ooh, I think I think six no. Grand the Titan V was five thousand, so seventy five hundred at least. <laughs> I, I I don't think it's going to be listed on here because you have to bulk order them. It's got third generation <laughs> Tensor cores, though, man. Sixteen man, gigabytes so of memory. It, it, it can run Quake Two <laughs> RTX at sixty frames a second. Mm-hmm. Listen, it's it's a single slot design, so it'll be loud as fuck, and that's what you look for. Oh yeah, the blower fan too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 140 watt though so i mean you can buy four of them yeah. it's it's v, it is vr you technically for, run for, four of them from uh 1600 watt power supply you can also run four of them off a diesel generator what's your point yeah <laughs> and you do already have the drivers because the drivers we were just talking about that they, they, they support this one so there you go one of the things i always <laughs> think about this is you know when you when you because they haven't released pricing information on this. This is going to be astronomically like, geez, because I, I was so desperate. I'm like, maybe I can get like a 20 series uh, Quadro. Those are out too. Damn it. I thought those were priced out yeah. of the, like, I'm going to do a, I'm desperate and I'm going to buy that. No, not, not that desperate. But then again, mm-hmm. I said the exact same thing about the 3090s. I'm like, well, people aren't going to pay a thousand dollars. Wrong. People paid a thousand dollars for like the Apple monitor stand, so I don't know. Okay, people are paying twelve hundred dollars for the thirty seventy. Th- this so, is reality yeah. now. This is like right at the beginning for shit went haywire, and they mm-hmm. they couldn't print <laughs> enough thirty nineties. Like, where are you people? <laughs> just like, oh, you're just spare grand. Okay, I, I found a bunch of them buried in my backyard. Yeah. Yes. Well, th- well you, you know, Mr. you are going to have you are going to have uh, day one driver support for this. There was another NVIDIA driver, just the stable branch released that added support for this, the A5000 and a couple T series, including the T1000, the, you know, the Robert Smith Terminator, mm-hmm. the one that like walked, turns into like silvery mercury jello. It's delicious. All right. Yeah. Huh? Makes it himself. <laughs> <laughs> gross uh, I don't know I am I mean this is like a different category of course like none of us will ever end up buying if, I mean if, if you're doing like GP GPU then yeah these are the cards for you otherwise you know well I'd <clears throat> alright NVIDIA I dare you I dare you to try to market this as a gaming card in some way like the Volta you're like this is totally not a gaming card you guys but here's some video ports on the back once we see Teslas with like blinky LEDs, that's when we know that it's over. Oh no! <laughs> my server case, my server rack has transparent windows, so you can see how all. Well, I, I, I was <laughs> on just on the case of RGBs, people. Calm your tits, please, because I, I was just trying to find a PCIe slot cooler without addressable RGB, because that's what I need on three ninety millimeter fans hanging in the middle of the case. <laughs> Just calm the hell down with it. Just, just a little bit. So, no. uh, <laughs> I, I'm i venting to the internet, Pedro. I don't expect anything to come out of it. Yes. Screaming into the void. <laughs> oh, yeah. Mm, blinky ass <laughs> void. Let's talk about some actual number digits, so. Yes, uh, Andre Tron, uh, who is uh, the developer behind Charles Games, they've put out a couple of games on Steam already, not ones that we've necessarily covered, uh, namely uh, Svoboda 1945 Liberation. Um, you can wishlist it right now, or the one that they actually released, Attentat uh, 1942. They're historical games, mostly centered around World War II, obviously. And they're, well, the, the definition of game is a bit debatable, but they're there, they're on Steam, you can play them. It's uh, very much in the edutainment category. And they put out a Gamma Sutra post 
describing their process of like okay how do we get started on making video games uh, Pedro, why, and why, why, then why the inter- just about sales numbers what's the big deal about that yeah that that that's when i did <laughs> i started reading that it's like why is this here control f linux ah okay i get it <laughs> so uh there's a couple of um graphs there that you have to zoom in on or right click uh, see a picture and they show the uh humble uh, sales numbers and the steam sales well not numbers but like the share uh yes between the different platforms you have your windows your macs and your linux and the linux on steam is only four percent versus five percent on mac and the rest being windows on humble though the story is is significantly different we're talking about 19% 19% on Mac, 48% on Windows, wow. and <laughs> the other 33% uh, being Linux. So, yeah, that's Take, that's take it with a grain of salt, though, because uh, the article does admit right after that, yeah, we get 20 times more purchases on Steam than we do on Humble, so these numbers don't actually yes. represent anything. Okay, but, allow me but, to do this, though. Okay, mm-hmm. when you're looking like, okay, even on Steam with all those numbers, your Windows is 92%, right? Yeah. That's fine. Mm-hmm. But the big takeaway from this is we're within 1% of Mac. So yep. don't, I mean, mm-hmm. yes, let's use this one data point and say it applies to every fucking game in existence, period, because that's how this works. Um, absolutely. absolutely. What, do you, what do you think? <laughs> Everyone this, else this, on this the internet class? does that, so hey, might as well. Yeah, <laughs> we're, we're going to use that too. So think twice. Think twice before you're like, if you're going to get into trouble doing a Mac, eh, might as well do a Linux. Cause let's That's face it, just going to get worse. And, and, and again, <laughs> the, the, the developers bring up, hey, Linux users are super enthusiastic when you port a game to their system. Are, they're listen. really, vo- they're volunteering with effort and bug reports and assistance. It's worth it to toss I, us a bone every once in a while. Especially moving to the M1 architecture. I guarantee you, if you're working on a game, penguins taste better than apples. Oh, yeah. Penguins is practically and chicken. A lot of a lot of developers like to complain. Oh, but we get ninety percent more Linux uh, do, do they report like bug reports from Linux users than anyone else. It's like yes, that's because Linux users actually know to report bugs, and if they do, they're more likely to get fixed. Unlike your yeah. typical Windows user that just bitches about it and doesn't do anything. Well, uh, come on, come on. Listen, I'm, I'm a Windows user, and I, I said re re re, and I negatively reviewed your game. That helps you. Yeah. Well, yeah, no, that, the, clearly that's what developers want. Bug reports? Yeah, no, fuck that. We don't want the, that. <laughs> so the other thing that happens primarily in the Windows space as well is you will get some hacked de- a DLL that someone figured out how to actually work around the thing. Stick it on DLL.org or whatever, or on ModDB, and that's going to be the workaround, <laughs> right? So there's no actual engagement with the developers. They're just like, yeah, we fixed this because, I don't know, we fixed it, right? Mm. Yep. Definitely, Pedro. definitely a thing. Why do you insist on playing these old ass games? Uh, aren't we doing FPGA gaming? Oh, we First are. We are. We are. <laughs> 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 Mr. Mr. Um, Witcher played on FPGAs, bitches. Yeah. Ah, save that one. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, well, we, we, gotta, we gotta talk about some FPGA gaming, because this is kind of neat. Uh, this is a uh, GitHub page links. All this stuff is in our show notes for ma- main Mr. or Mr. Devel, um, which is a remake of a... Um, of the Mist Project for uh, the Terrasic uh, DE10 Nano, as opposed to uh, the what have Mist they done to the Raspberry Pi? That's not a Raspberry Pi. Is that's it? not that's, that's not a Raspberry Pi. That is that an is FPGA. Not a Raspberry Pi. <laughs> it, it, it is it is more powerful than the one the original. Don't project let your Pi do meth. And uh, <laughs> it, it, uh, it's also a lot more uh, commercially available as well. So if you want to play arcade games, with I, your I, FPGA, I'm like really can, really curious because I'm seeing like a, this has got an optical digital out for audio. I'm like, okay. <laughs> It has a bunch mm-hmm. of expansion boards too. Uh, the, so they, they say if you just get the basic board, you'll be able to run 90% of all of the emulator cores here. But uh, some of them are mem- more memory intensive. You need to get the memory module. They have additional connectivity modules. It's pretty It's pretty robust in, in terms of like an FPGA platform. Um, it, right now, it'll support a wide array of 8 and 16-bit computers and consoles. Uh, the links are Links on the side of that page sort of cover the gamut of those. And yeah, it's just a cool little project. It's not, I mean, you, you could easily say, yeah, RetroArch is a lot easier to use. You don't need to have any fancy hardware, but it's cool to see like 
using field pro- programmable bo- that field programmable gate arrays yes. to replicate um <laughs> original architecture and do actual like hardware emulation it's really cool it, it can yeah. definitely be Act- like actively accurate about, emulation yeah tough sell <laughs> because you know i've mentioned retro arch to somebody and they hissed at me i'm like okay maybe that's beyond the scope of your abilities Mm-hmm. <laughs> there, 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 this, yeah, the this, retro arch yeah. also has a bit of an, an overhead when it comes to actually running the thing uh emulation station does not come cheap on the system resources especially if you have a raspberry pi but yeah no th- if you want to do accurate emulation and you don't want to resort to the raspberry pi or an x86 box whatever the case may be that yeah, it, FPGAs are the thing. <laughs> that's it, man. That, that's gonna be FPGAs. They're the thing. Pedro Mateus. They are. Yeah. Nin- <laughs> n- 1985 to 2021. FPGAs hey, are a thing. My sound card that we're using is enough. a big honking <laughs> FPGA. And it gets the job done. So, I, on a completely different topic, I get to say this twice on two completely unrelated ah, things ah. intentionally. Pedro, why do you have such a um, love boner for these old? Because I think you weed yourself a little bit in Discord when you discovered this game. Uh I did, uh, and uh, I weed myself a little bit when it came out on Steam earlier in the year, and I weed myself a little bit when it came out on GOG a few years ago. Do you uh, not have drugs I yet? And I very much... No, he's got a faulty bladder. No. You gotta hold on to your life, man. You gotta hold on to your little gonads and strength. <laughs> but, yeah, no, uh, I played uh, the original Power Slide back in 1999 when it first came out, and I loved it. I really did. And with the subsequent versions of Windows and uh, better hardware, the game stopped working. So I've been, you know, kind of desperate to play it some more. And then the GOG version came out. I was really happy with it, but it has an issue. Uh, if you enable the glide renderer, which you had to do uh, to be able to, you know, see the actual, um, let's say, high-end graphics <laughs> or what the game called high-end you, you graphics. You can shut your whore mouth. I'm having like 3D effects, voodoo one flashbacks going, shit, we've peaked. It's glide, yes. No, that 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 is just straight up glide. Uh, and the um, well, on Linux that has issues because the glide renderer would just shit itself every now and then. Now, uh, I, a couple of days ago, I found that there's a Power Slide remake. It's available on ModDB. It's uh, built on Ogre, and it's, it's Ogre Nine Thousand. God damn it. Yeah, it was released in 2018, and it's 2021 now. How did I go three years without knowing that this existed? It does full-on OpenGL. Because you're know, impervious because to joy. Because you're an idiot? I don't know. <laughs> but that game brings me joy. <laughs> it does. It's a game that's all about... Well, the, the, the name is very much indicative of Completely what you're going joy to be doing. You slide. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm just looking forward to when uh, Pedro replaces Marie Kondo in that Netflix show. The game I won <laughs> is, it was a packing game with the original Voodoo 1. It was called Pod. And it was a racing game. And it was a fucking blast. And I'm, I will. That's I, Ubisoft. Uh, good luck getting Ubisoft to let go of that. <laughs> I didn't say it was going to fucking happen, Pedro. Again. <laughs> Again. <laughs> I like Pod too. I did. Uh, I very much did. Planet of Death. He's a black Please. hole of joy. Someone You're trying to suck my joy out. Re-implementation. <sighs> All right. Um, yeah. So it's a Bitbucket, right? We can uh, go check that out yep. and yep. look at it. You can check it's it out. Un- untitled uh, the- Projects. All right. I mean, yes. it's C++. <laughs> this is better than I get. I got very excited. I saw earlier today somebody had posted the uh, code to uh, Cruise in USA. Mm. Yeah, from the arcade game. I'm like, oh, yeah, that yeah, was yeah. a blast. Yeah, uh, that yeah. was everywhere. And I, uh, I know, I know what that exact arcade cabinet yeah, looks like, right? <laughs> <laughs> and but it, it is genuinely 100 percent assembly. I'm like, oh, that's going to take a minute before we see it. So it's there. Uh, yeah, the, the Power it. Slide remake uh, also has working multiplayer. It requires some setting up, but it works. <laughs> okay. Uh, I do not have a Logitech keyboard. I only use Microsoft keyboards because I lost I, one of those. I, I, had, I, had one of those I had one of those macro keyboards, and I snapped it in half over my knee in a heated gamer moment. 
Oh. Yeah. Pedro's holding something. <laughs> what is that? It's a cable. It's a Logitech keyboard. Oh. <laughs> I, w- I wonder what kind of crap's well, going to fall out of it if he tilts it any, for- any further forward. This is why I'm goading him on. It has... <laughs> It has the uh, the G keys. No, it doesn't. Uh, nothing falls because I already um, cleaned it out when I first got ah, it. Ah, some, someone a, prepared. Yeah. Someone as a prop. Logitech G15. Uh, it is uh, the keyboard I'd be using right now if it weren't for the fact that I can't find the uh, keys to make it, you know, with a Portuguese layout. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm so used to that layout that I kind of need it to be. But uh, yeah, Uh we bring this up because there's a GK bind a uh, bit of software available on GitHub right now, uh, created by one uh, N- Nick BC or Nick B. Nickelback. Clifford. Yes, Nickelback Clifford. Look at and- this graph. <laughs> Uh, uh, very uh, lo- like right off the bat it's a Linux utility for binding custom behavior to Logitech keyboards it lets you set what the uh, G keys uh, do the, on the left side if you have a G15 or G510 or any of the other ones that have the G keys <gasps> if, you, if you are an Arch user don't bother compiling I like that shot fired <laughs> 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 yeah, no, it's available on the AUR. Just go. And uh, he does bring up the the whole why are you developing a whole new thing instead of just improving on the, the one that already exists, like the G910G key macro support. And he says, well, uh, the other one only supports English, French, and Slovenian uh, layouts. This one supports all of them. Kudos. Very good. Uh, G Keybind also supports all Logitech keyboards supported by key LEDs, not just the G910 family. I guess that's why the G15 doesn't actually work with this, because I tried. That's the reason that it's out right now. Uh, yesterday, I tried to get it to work, but it didn't. <laughs> Go ahead. Can, can I run top on the fucking LCD? Uh, you can. Okay. You're going to have to program it yourself. No, nope, you nope, nope. this entire software project <laughs> is useless. It's dead to me if I can't do that out of the box. I, I, uh, will, no, I, will the, say- I don't know if this software can do it. This is just for the macro keys. This is just for setting those yeah, up. Yeah, I want a macro key that opens fucking top. I, I will say oh, yeah, when I was like, when when I when I looked at the config file here, I was expecting like some Xorg level shit of just like of correct thick. It's real simple. It's like G1, G2, G3, and a nice little YAML. I appreciate that. Someone put some thought into making their config file usable. <gasps> nice. Yes. Though a GUI wouldn't go amiss. <laughs> it's it's 2021. Come on. <laughs> exactly. Command line. Learn to use it. Um, no, you, you got to plug it into your ear and use the matrix to configure it. Maybe we can stream your next session of uh, Keyboard Hero. Maybe. Yeah, mm-hmm. from home. Uh, Keyboard King. <laughs> well, I mean, I mean, you can, you can do the window... The, the Windows version, at least, with this. Cloud Morph! It's, uh, it's a thing from uh, Zhang To 35 I kept reading it as going to 35, but that's not what it is. Uh, but it is a fork of another project that this guy worked on uh, to specifically allow uh, RetroArch with a WebRTC frontend. This one is using uh, Docker and Wine to essentially let you stream Windows games over, over uh, a network. Right now, it only works with really basic games like uh, Diablo or StarCraft. Uh, but it's definitely a thing. Um, I was I was actually surprised it's not using any sort of like Windows containerization. It's all just done in Wine. I believe it does have the ability to extend to a Windows container, but why would you want to do that? <laughs> um, it it has it has a good number of features. Like you can actually browse and switch through games, which is pretty neat. Lists the uh, latencies. Um, I don't I don't know I don't. I don't I can see something like this being a better option than, say, remote play because everyone is hampered by the same delay from a central location. But, I don't know. It's a neat open source project. You can check it out. The link to the GitHub is in our show notes. It, uh, as, I'm trying you know, to troll. Um, Shut up. Community. <laughs> as, as far as community efforts go to, like, introduce game streaming, I this one is already much further along than I would have expected, but yeah, that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's pretty neat. I wanted to give it a mention, but here's a question everybody needs to ask. Are our gets learning? Hmm? Maybe. Maybe. You could help yeah, me out. On to, on <laughs> because if there's anything that needs to be gamified, 
It's Git. And we now have an interactive Git learning game. This is so awesome. I'm just very happy to see this because, oh my Git, yay, it's an open source game about, you'll never guess, possibly learning Git. You download the byte areas, Linux, Mac OS, Windows. It's all on itch. You can build your own thing. This is kind of like not joking needed because yes, a lot of people kind of know a little bit about Git and they don't let that. Oh, and it's done with Godot too, which is neat. They don't yep. let that uh, lack of understanding and knowledge slow them down even a little bit when they're fucking your code up, fucking up your repos. No. Now, <laughs> oh yeah, I would for, like for to sure. see this implement like a tier based ranking system of what level of right access into fucking uh, what <laughs> that you get access <laughs> to when you show me your fucking score. Yeah, you, you send me your URL with your username, and I'm like, okay. <laughs> Yeah, play some oh my git and show yeah. me your, your result. Yeah. I'm not fucking joking at all. 100%. Yeah, and, and, and like this is, this is good because as a developer, if you're using it, you should absolutely know how to use the command line. Yes, IntelliJ, yes, NetBeans, yes, Eclipse will do all this shit for you, but get you need to act... You actually need to learn how to utilize the tool. Um, you know, being a little framework in Godot for bash scripting challenges, and it is just bash scripting challenges because you set a bunch of like bash script tests at the end of it to make sure that uh, to make sure that, you know, the level, the puzzle that you created was actually solved. And it's pretty loose and like, sometimes they're story based. Sometimes it's just like, write a shell script that does this thing. Who knows? Um, it's a little bit like Git Vicky, which is good because that's how I learned my VI commands playing a stupid Mavis Bacon game in you VI. Know what? You know what? He gets bonus points for the level names uh, because low level merge remote <laughs> shit, happens. shit happens. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Indeed. Um, but yeah, no, it's, it's, it's good to know um, if you do not know Git if you're interested in learning a little bit, this might be a good tool for you. Yeah. Uh, that doesn't involve you completely fucking up your project by removing some important branches or more diffs importantly, that you do. someone else's. <laughs> some yes. Some, oh, so you're saying some. that passing dash dash force with every command is not best practice? Listen, we man, were I knew what I was doing. <laughs> hey, hey, you really should only do that with push in very specific circumstances. But we we're talking about the previous super shows, and there's actually a good reason to use git commit force that we're not here to talk about because yes. this is this isn't Jordan teaches people how to use git. You can use oh my git instead, and I can shut the fuck up. Coming up next, uh, we're throwing some chairs at Metro chairs. Exodus. This is good chair though. shiz. Yes. Yet, comrades, welcome back to Geoquisition. This week we take good close look at Metro Exodus from 4A Games done on 4A Engine. You can pick it up for about $39.99 US. I decided to drop my terrible you Russian did. I was like, how long are you going to power but, but through that? I lasted longer than some of the voice actors in Metro, so Fair. I'm going to call that a win. Um... Yeah, so uh, what, what what is it? Flee the shattered ruins of Moscow Metro and embark on an epic continent-spanning journey across the post-apocalyptic Russian wilderness. Explore vast non-linear levels. <laughs> Lose yourself in an immersive sandbox survival experience and follow a thrilling storyline that spans an entire year in the greatest Metro we're adventure yet. We're watching the video right now and we're watching Pedro play and the entire time Pedro's like, is this trying to kill me? Is this trying to kill me? Is yeah. this trying to kill me? Is, 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 is this no, the to find trying to murder me? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so mandatory disclosure, uh, Ben and Pedro bought their copies. Ben was nice enough to buy me a copy because I have no money anymore. Uh, <laughs> so let's, uh, let's get into it. Uh, Pedro, Pedro, what'd you think? Uh, yeah, over here on the Ryzen 7 3700X and the GTX 1080, it at least, at least it launched, uh, out of the box on the correct monitor, which is the one on the left. Uh, it in a 1080p borderless window, which was weird. That that's probably the first game that's ever done that. Uh, it, I couldn't, for the life of me, make it full screen. Uh, with the .cfg, I set it to full screen and it refused. Uh, but hey, uh, I just changed the in-game resolution to 2560 by 1440, and I told Kwin. You go and make that full screen. And it does. It's a shit compositor, but it's a wonderful window manager. Go figure. Uh, the graphics, well, it, yeah, it, it, it's a triple A game. They're amazing. Um, the controls, on the other hand, 
If you rebind the movement keys to literally anything other than WASD, you can't interact with the map or any of the prompts that require you to press WASD because they just get unmapped and the game doesn't take input from anything. Uh, you cannot progress if you have the audacity of changing the world's most changed keys, you know, the movement ones, because not everyone has the mouse on their right hand, and some of us with the mouse on the left like to use the arrow keys, but what do I know? Um, I've banged that drum enough times on this very segment of this very show. My solution was to keep the um, If You controller plugged in at all times uh, with the, uh, and just wiggle the D-pad in either a left or right direction to interact whenever those prompts came up. I have to use three input devices to play Metro Exodus. Compounded, you compound that with the fact that I had to hit the config file again to disable mouse smoothing and motion blur. In Metro Exodus, even in the makes with the working segment is already not looking terribly good. Then we get to the fun, and as much as I want to tear into a AAA game for how this shit is just unacceptable in 2021, especially for $40, um, I, I like it. I do. God damn it. <laughs> uh, they basically addressed most of my and many others' with uh, Metro uh, 2033 and Metro Last Light. Uh, specifically, uh, it's not on rails, ironically enough. Uh, the <laughs> uh, You have fairly linear segments uh, every now and then between the semi-open world bits, uh, but you get to explore those semi-open world bits as much as you like, and then you move on. If you want to, you can literally go anal and just explore everything. Um, I hear that if you stick to the main mission, you can finish the game in about 14 hours. That's about six hours more than the previous two games, uh, which, yeah, they were like eight hour campaigns. That's it. Uh, and I, I I played Fallout 3 and I played uh, the Stalker series before Metro 2033. Uh, and I was very underwhelmed. Uh, last light. Too. They were. They told very good stories, but did, you were absolutely being led by the nose down a very specific path and with no deviation whatsoever. You do this, and that's it. Exodus gives me exactly what I wanted, but since we can never have everything, it also... Well, it's also broken because of the controls issue, which is a bug that's been known since 2019 and still hasn't been fuck, uh, fucked, fixed. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'll give it three chairs. <laughs> All right, I guess it's my turn. How about you, Ben? <laughs> Fine, hang on, I gotta hit another ASCII penis. Uh, there we go. <laughs> How many do you need to hit today, Ben? Listen, <laughs> listen, I got a lot of ASCII penises. Uh, There's so much ASCII violence. It is a perfectly, <laughs> perfectly suitable navigation system on a stream deck when I don't feel like making arrows. Go fuck yourself. Uh, all right. How does it run over here on Debian Bullseye? Well, that's on a Threadripper 1920X, 32 gig of Jules RAM, NVMe, 2060, all the fun stuff. Uh, let's talk about how it works because as soon as I launched it, slammed in my leftmost monitor, which is always a bad sign, having SDL1 flashbacks. I'm like, oh no, this is going to be a problem. This problem is also compounded by, uh, there's no windowed mode. There's just a windowed mode in the config file, but in the game itself, I don't know if it was like artistic, whatever. Uh, they can play it in windowed mode, developing the game, but fuck you at home. So you can force that in the config file and kind of get it. I could live with it if it didn't launch. You know, if I could have a win non-windowed mode, if it didn't launch in the most left monitor zero zero is where it hits and it fucks with my nvidia color config profile to every single time it launches dying a fire with that now my options to play this latest metro is to attempt to play while sitting here with looking completely hard to my left or play the game on my primary monitor in a 1080p borderless window after hacking the config file that's it i could technically full screen it on the primary monitor by setting the resolution to 2160p. Did I mention I have a 2060? That's a little too cinematic <laughs> for my taste, man. Um, the DXVK full screen hacks for X exists for a reason, guys. So 
fix that. I mean, I'm not the only one. Go look in the forums. I'm like, whoa, okay, this is weird. RN Jesus over here just happened. It landed on his correct monitor. And he's like, yay. He's happy about that. Uh, no such look over here. Now, I know you might be thinking, hey, you could just change your X layout for a two-year-old game. Uh, that's not happening, especially when every other <laughs> Linux title in the last five years has figured this out. Times have changed since the uh, last Metro game on Linux. So look into that pretty, pretty please. Now, I had to do it since I'm the only one with the RTX superpowers. Enabling it in-game, uh, the first thing you're going to notice when you enable uh, RTX on this end was it locked it right the fuck up. That happened. But <laughs> since I'm already familiar with this config file, I pranced my happy ass right back into that, flipped the bit, put it on one, started it up. That took my typical 1080p performance on the 2060 at 1080p, which was hovering. I mean, slammed to the right, too. It was hovering in the mid 70s, which is real nice. RTX on bra, that got knocked down to surprisingly only in the 50s. Better love story than Quake 2. Now, as for the ray tracing, I posted that earlier this week at our Discord, a screenshot. If you, you can kind of tell a difference if you squint. I mean, you're like, eh, okay, I guess maybe that lamp looks like, oh, it's casting a ray, maybe. Um, no, definitely not fully path trace. Now, it does a bang-up job utilizing all 24 threads on the Threadripper, which was impressive. I cracked open h and like, wow, well done there. and. Um, but with all these difficulties, out of curiosity, since I've waited, I've not bought this game until it was released on Wednesday. I wanted to play it native, but out of curiosity, I flipped the Proton switch and everything just started working. Like, okay, that <laughs> whelp. Oh, look, it has a platinum rating. Nice. And yeah, I've been playing it on Proton because, again, all the hackery and bullshit. So... Here's another pro free pro tip for makes with the working. Just go ahead and nuke all your video files. Then the game actually starts without having to sit for like damn near a minute with all the, uh, hey, look, here's useless shit that you can't escape from. You can. Now, let's talk about the fun real quick, real quick before I go full metal, Mateus. 2.6 hours and I'm still in the prologue. That was the amount of technical bullshit I was trying to get it to full screen on my primary monitor. Uh, that was a lot of time not gaming, but you know what? Um, then I get in the game proper and, you know, there's a lot of not gaming right there in the first couple of hours. And I'm not really exaggerating. I forgot some of the buttons on the keyboard between the time they were introduced to me versus actually needing to press them. Now, in all fairness, most of the button pressing was Q, 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 Q. Wait a minute. I'm out. Craft, 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 craft. Q, 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 Q. Slamming on the med kits. Because, holy hell, post-nuke, Soviet Russia will give Australia a run for its money on shit that's going to kill you, man. It's a little bit dangerous. Now, um, where was I at? Okay, so four hours in, I had my first fun part with air quotes, and that was like getting to the trolley. I'm not spoiling anything because some people are like me. They've managed to somehow avoid any spoilers for this game. And uh, about the seven-hour mark, which I reached uh, when I got back to the house today, it kind of goes full Mad Max in that section. Maybe you know what I'm talking about. I think I might be done with it right now, if I'm going to be honest, uh, because like the story itself has really been painted by numbers and the combat and it's only kind of so-so. Uh, basically, to survive the Metro well, Exodus is uh, you get an airsoft rifle. And once I discovered that you can effectively one-shot everything with a headshot, I just snack around. And then when I get bored, I stealth kill because stealth in this game is just get behind the motherfucker. That's it. And just walk up to him, knife him. Um, then you go back and loot all the things. As I'm sure Pedro, that's Pedro's favorite part of this damn game is just like the looting because you have to or you will die. The exploration. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's all right. But in 2021, I don't know if it's $60 worth of all right. Uh, considering that this thing goes on sale for like 20 bucks, 11 times a year. Also kind of a dick move to be at full price on the Linux release after doing all that. Just saying, maybe. Then again, fuck me. I bought two gold edition copies, so you can go play in traffic if you get a problem with me saying, maybe it should have been nineteen ninety nine. I'm going to say catch it on sale when it is. There's a lot of shit to do. It might not be your bag, but eh, if you like really cinematic things, man, like get some popcorn. 
enjoy the story because there is a serious, serious, serious chunk of unskippable cutscene stuff in this, man. I'm going to say, you know what, if it worked, the performance was really good, but the monitor shit, that's some amateur level stuff that needs to get fixed. So I'm going to say sort of one on this. Maybe Jordan had a better experience. Nope. Um, oh. wait, no, uh, yeah, uh, on Fedora 32, 64 bit with the uh R9 3900X and the GTX 1080 Ti, you know, that old crusty thing that can't barely ray trace at like 10 frames a second. Yeah, it also really likes my leftmost monitor. Um, apparently, RN Jesus isn't as kind to me as it is to Pedro. Uh, but you know what, my new desk layout, I can actually just kind of turn around and use that monitor, so it didn't really stop me. Um, what did stop me though was the fact that it crashes every time I tried to change the settings in the menu. Uh, that was fun. I uh, updated my NVIDIA drivers and then it only sort of kind of does that sometimes. Um, I don't know. Maybe I'm having performance issues. Maybe it's Zen 3. I don't know what, but like it was kind of running like shit on my box. Uh, it was very evenly multi threaded. Like utilization wasn't high, but it was on Ultra at 1080p. It was kind of hovering around like 4550, which was not the greatest experience. Um, control wise, yeah, it really fucking uses a lot full keyboard, especially it really likes having buttons on the complete opposite side of anything you're doing. Uh, that that's great. Um, also, also being able to, having to long press stuff just to you know interact with the world really useful when every other game requires you to just press E and not hold down E or F or I or whatever. Um, yeah, but like look, looks wise, sound wise, it's triple A game. It's fully voice acted. I can hear Steve Bloom voicing ninety percent of the characters because they only wanted to hire one voice actor. Uh, and it's super gorgeous if you're looking at the footage right now. Even the non ray trace version looks fantastic. So I get some points for that. Fun wise though, yeah, that intro. I'm with Ven. At least Half Life lets you dick around a little bit. Taking control away from me, not to, to watch a movie. I'm fine with it in Kojima games, but Kojima has earned my trust. Metro guys, you have not. Um, and I mean, like, yeah, it's been a minute since we've had a AAA game ported natively to Linux, let alone an in-house horse, in-house horse, in-house port, and it kind of shows. At least, at least for me, it was kind of poo-poo. Um. After two games and two remakes, we finally left the Metro to greener pastures and the Soviet Fallout vibe is in full force and, you know, hot damn, it's it's gorgeous. I, I'm a big fan of like the, the post nuclear decay look and this game has it in spades. However, I got about three hours in and I find myself feeling the gameplay very lacking. Everything's all beautiful and you know, you kind of want to explore stuff, but the game itself is pretty linear. You get it from point A to point B to point C. You can go and explore and scavenge, but you're going to find out that you're running out of supplies real quick. And then it becomes, well, time to go fi find more ball bearings. And I, I don't know. <laughs> it's I don't, to, to, to me, it's not, it's not super engaging. Um, there's there's definitely a lot of stuff to do, um, but it's it all seems like busy work. It's not particularly engaging. I don't feel like I'm fighting for survival. I'm finding myself more annoyed by, you know, running out of bullets or med kits or stuff like that. I get that it's part of the game. It's a sandbox survival game. <laughs> it's, a san it's a sandbox survival game. I get it. But, you know, I don't like sandbox survival games. That's I'm pretty, pretty vocal. About I thought that. it was a railroad <laughs> management simulator. The fuck? Yeah. I mean, it's 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 a, it's a sandbox yeah, survival that's pretty light on that. <laughs> with with a fairly linear plot and a fairly linear mission structure. Um, but anyways, um, and, and and you know what, railroading, no, no pun intended, isn't necessarily a bad thing. Roller coasters are linear, but you know they're exciting. But you gotta have the meat, and I really feel like this game is missing the meat. Um, especially like Vince said, for a sixty dollar game, it really just feels like the bare minimum for this sort of game. The crafting is so just click on a thing there's no recipe gathering um there's there's no anything it just feels very uninvolved um i i don't know i given given how you're supposed to be like sneaking around i really feel like a metal gear solid style game would probably be better fit than what we were given here that's just my opinion i don't know take it for what it's worth i'm gonna give it two chairs it's okay didn't really do anything for me one thing I really wish just once I would have encountered in my seven hours, because I think we can all agree, there, there's, there's an emphasis on survival 
in the Metro yes. series. Always has been. Ammo's really mm. scarce. You do like crafting. You got to click on shit to make your bullets and stuff like that. Bull- bullets as currency was super interesting in the previous. That years. was. That was. Um, yes. <laughs> but just once for that realism, I would like the NPC that is fucking one shotting me. I, I want to hear from his side just once. I want to hear click. And not bad. Oh yeah, <laughs> because the gun is jammed, <laughs> or, or or they're out of ammo. Just just once, because we have you know six fucking bullets, but everybody you go up against in a gunfight, infinite ammo. So yeah. yep, I mean, <laughs> and when you loot their up. bodies, they have like six bullets yeah. left. A uh-huh. <laughs> little bit of that, a little bit of that. Just I, I want to see the click, man. Um, yeah, I'll. I'll probably power my way through it. I do feel with this one, maybe more so than, yeah, I'm definitely going to say maybe. I mean, they're telling a story. I get that. I, I understand that. But maybe it gets more involved later on in the game. Like right now, I like the exposition dumps, the things I can't like get out of. Like, no, you can wiggle your head left and right. You're playing the game. Like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, Artyom is one of the worst silent protagonists because he doesn't say anything in game, but in the loading screens, oh, fucker won't he, shut he's up. He's a chatty oh, bitch in the game. Yeah. <laughs> oh, dude, he's, he's fucking John McClane too. Every cinematic, it's like this man is dead. This man is dead. He just got shot. No, he get, he gets up. He's fine. He got thrown off a cliff. He's fine. He got irradiated. He's fine. But where is that? Where is that invincibility in the game? Right? I don't know, man. I don't know. <laughs> Plot armor gets turned off at one point. <laughs> I mean, yeah, what, what? There, there's a lot going in the game. It's not lazily made. A lot of love, a lot of work went into it. But yeah, it feels like there's some disjointed parts in it. That's all I'm going to say. Yeah. And- Definitely a little bit of ludonarrative narrative dissonance, at least in my opinion. All right. Well, coming up next, uh, Pedro made some comments about Hellfire, and someone has made a point by point rebuttal. Prepare. Yeah. Some people say never meet your heroes. Um, Some people I say, say never meet your memes. You ever met Maurice? <laughs> Maurice? Have, I mean, I've met uh, Frank. No, Frank's a meme. Certainly no one calls me the space cowboy, which is unfortunate, but uh, to your face. some people... <laughs> you, some people do you, like to you get a in touch and every a now and then. Yes. <laughs> But uh, if you're walking around thinking about how to best get in touch with us, feel free to head on over to LuxGameCast.com, hit the contact button. There's a form you gotta fill. It's pretty easy. Just make sure you pick uh, LGC Weekly as the show that you're sending your hate mail to. Otherwise, we may be inclined to misinterpret it as some, I don't know, constructive feedback or relationship advice for Jordan. That that that, that too is an option. <laughs> and yeah, uh, if you are... Uh, looking to for people to review your game make sure to read the little blurb at the top of no. the form it, uh-huh. it's not that long it's, one copy is yeah. all we can afford man <laughs> generating these steam keys are expensive pedro mateus absolutely yeah so i don't know what you're going to do with it i'll tell you what you're going to do what we're going to do with this we're just to going you. to redeem them and play nope. your game uh-uh incorrect i'll send it back to you i'm that asshole be like here, you have to backup. <laughs> if you send it to me, I'll stick it on my back. I, I I won't. I'll be like, can I have my spider back? I'm like, here's your spider back. You know, <laughs> old kids. Yeah, if you just send us the one, I, we're yeah, just going to impolitely decline it. All right, I understood all right, that right. reference. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. so it turns out the uh, that old Mateus Boyd and got himself a comment from the developer because you were playing um, Hellfire Diablo or something. Yeah, uh, Devolution, Devolution X. X. It, yes, it was <laughs> genuinely sixty minutes of complaining. <laughs> exactly. so, 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 so an extended chairquisition, <laughs> pretty much, basically. basically Pedro and cut. Yes. Yeah, this, this is this is Be from fucking Andrews. grateful. What you get on this show is the abridged. Yeah, yeah. We we, we have an edit we have an editor here. Um so yeah, and Ender's Jenbo. Yenbo says, Jenbo. Thanks for playing. HP bar is a devolution X specific uh, QOL. On, we gotta go back to this. So this is like a point by point. Rebuttal, yes. Yeah. So you, you get a little bit of taking notes. Yeah, he watched the whole thing. Mm-hmm. I this, this is my favorite part, is just like this is the new segment is de- developers of open source projects yelling at Pedro. It's fantastic. Yes. Um, so thanks for playing. 
HP bar is a Devolution <laughs> X specific quality of life optional. Okay, we, we got to go through this. We got to go through this one by one, though, man. We because you, right, yeah, right, you read right, the right, thing, right. people at home are like, huh? Yeah, that's that's the true. HP I don't, bar I don't thing. For- I specific. I specifically said that uh, I wasn't sure if it that was uh, a Hellfire thing or a Devolution X thing. It is a Devolution X thing. So there you go. Okay. Now, all right, all right. why transparent caves? Yeah, translucent caves. Why was this an issue? This was an issue because at one point I was in one of the caves where you have to kill all the monsters to get the water supply to, you know, not be corrupted. And I complained that I couldn't see behind the walls because caves don't have transparency. <laughs> so they, they, they do not have transparency. <laughs> Moving on. Early on, you yes. found a shrine that repairs all your all you items. <laughs> Time cannot diminish the power of steel. So apparently you, yeah, you were asking what the fuck got, it did. Yeah, I, I got I, the shrine. I, I, it's I, like I, I, I have can, fuck all idea what that did. <laughs> I, can, I can understand context clues. Um, Hellfire did not add an option to not randomize quests. That's Devolution X specific. That was Next. my mistake. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. What was the question? I don't. I don't. <laughs> the the question was because Diablo One has randomized quests. Okay. If you start a character, you're not going to get all the quests. So now Devolution X specifically has a thing that says you get all the quests. Okay. Get it. All right. Um, Diablo One does not have item highlighting. We are working on this. That I complained about this like okay there's no item highlighting I, I wasn't sure if this, that was the, a thing or not is, this and is I, like the point in Galaxy <laughs> Quest where like the computer is giving a status update and Sigourney Weaver is just repeating the status update no hang on I'm genuinely <laughs> curious see you actually have played these fucking games I'm coming I've, from okay, this okay okay you, you know you're, you're right you're right so I'm gonna be throwing down like <laughs> okay so you, you were complaining that this game didn't have something that the original game didn't have Yes, because got it, I wasn't sure. I know. specifically said <laughs> that but I wasn't sure if it did or not, and it didn't. Mateus maneuver right there. Um, <laughs> Being right, unsure right. of things, yes. All right. <laughs> mana is only used after casting spells. Cast two in a row can get you to negative mana. Yep. Warriors and get- apparently I used, I cast enough spells in a row that I got so much negative mana that even after drinking a mana potion, I still had negative mana after that. Yep. So, uh, Warriors yeah. also, <laughs> Warrior gets very little mana for mana potions. That's uh, self explanatory. Yes. <laughs> All right. And we do have plans of improving the shop menus, but at least you seem, CM, like a, like a pen. The wrong scene. <laughs> yes. <laughs> to be enjoying that we made the scroll wheel work. That that Did was very s- much appreciated. I didn't actually mention that on the stream, but yes, mm-hmm. uh, being able to use the scroll wheel to Don't scroll. Don't fuck with my illusions, because uh, I want to believe that there's like a solid 12 minute <laughs> like super cut of you just like, we scroll. <laughs> no, no, I, I want to imagine like, this is bullshit. Diablo couldn't scroll. This is ruining my verisimilitude. It's oh. ruining the experience. Ugh. Ugh. Not, not yeah, a lot of people would probably complain about that, but I was very much uh, appreciative of the fact that yes, you can use the scroll will to navigate the shops because the the old uh, Diablo UI for the shops is fuck awful. Mm. That's the I, nicest I, thing I can see about that. <laughs> I, 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 I do. I do have, all right, go ahead. Yeah, Yenbo. Um, if you, you, since you've watched it, like if you can pick out like surgically two or three things he enjoyed and remove that. <laughs> I would be very great. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, I'm not going to play it on stream again. So. As, I, I might. As someone who played a lot of Diablo 1 back in the day, um, a lot of these seem like actual fucking improvements that would have been right. super nice back in 98 or whatever. Yeah. Like, yeah. And they're um, doing more, which is what I said to him. It's like, I very much look forward to the improved shop UI, especially. Yeah. That, 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 that. If, yes, if, if they... If they can turn Diablo 1 into Diablo 2, I will be very happy. Mm. It's well, called Torchlight. <laughs> shush! Where can people Torch- find uh, Hellfire? Where's that at? Uh, uh, Sierra. Sierra. Devolution X. Devolution yeah. X. Yes. Uh, Get up. The uh, original uh, Devolution X. Uh, it, you can find it uh, on their GitHub. If you want to get the assets, GOG. Yep. All right. Seems fair. I don't think we're going to do any better than that, but we did. 
unintentionally <laughs> learned some shit. At least I did about Diablo or whatever it clicks. is. Clicks. They were talking about. So many clicks. Oh, devil clicks, baby. If you want to get in touch with me, you can scream in my direction. I'm on Twitter at Vince Stone doing that thing. I click on hearts and stars and shit and circles and um, we got one of those federated uh, Mastodon things where you can toot. That sounds dirty because it is. At mass.linuxgamecast.com. I'm there just at Vin. I'm uh, hanging out with these two yahoos. I may not be the Lord of Terror, but I do invite you to stay a while and listen at my Twitter at the Burning Fool or on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Burning Fool. I got to stream something tomorrow. I didn't stream something on Friday, so I got to do a makeup stream. Stay tuned. Makeup. Oh, nice. Yeah, I'm going to put on lipstick. Okay. Uh, just don't do it near the fire. Tell me I'm here to fly. What you you're unboxing? Yeah. <laughs> I, I'd fuck me. I'd I, fuck me hard. I am the lord of not paying attention. Uh, my name is Pedro Mateos, or so I'm told. Uh, if you'd like to get in touch with me, at unaccounted4, F-O-U-R, uh, on Twitter, that, that, that's, that's probably the best way to do it. Credits. Credit time. Time for some credit. Give them the credit. Credit where credit, credit is due. <laughs> <laughs> that's unreasonably kinky for this show too hot for twitch too hot for twitch star wars yeah because i was rushing to get these credits done i might have forgot that part oh man <laughs> kathleen Kennedy, disney owns us now yeah we gotta, baby. Thank, we gotta thank our evil emperor omegas and you know our executive producers Darth Aldius, Darth Barbramp, Dot Scott Michaud, Dot Mr. Darth Mr. Foxdog, Darth Arthur, and Darth Atomic Ass, Darth Mike G, Darth Empty, and Dark Darth Drummer Seven, Mike and Darth Sith. Dark Wing, oh, Dark yeah. Darth Wing, Darth Wing, Darth Wing, Darth Wing. I mean, and Disney Jack B, it, so. Bruno L, Let's get Ryder serious. X Machina, Trudgy, Vertinuda, Justin Frostclaw, and Kyle Linux are the sea monsters. And of course, I the Death Notes, page. Nova K, Bissell B, Chad B, Romeo V, Marson K, System T, Craig H, Renee K, Leonardo C, Dacris, Kim, Smashly G, um, Chris, I don't think Stephen I've ever Jill, seen a software Benjamin. plugin limiter cry, but Pedro, I think he made it weep a little bit just in with it. When limiters, <laughs> when limiters cry, is that like your new Prince cover? Oh hell yeah, dude! You broke his hip. <laughs> and all the the chair legs, of course. You're all truly, truly insane. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Disney's gonna sue somebody. Nah. -uh. <laughs> Probably. Well, this, well, this was this was the last Linux game cast ah. podcast. <laughs> Five dudes.